Hi, this is Alex Paul of Aspen Core Media, and I'm here with Bertrand Lombardo at the uh, 2018 uh, Electronica Conference. And well, hey, thanks for being here, because it's a really busy show. Very busy, thank you, Alex, nice to meeting you. It's been a pleasure to be here. It's a fantastic event. Uh, sensor is a very trending hot topic. It's just very, very good. Well, I mean, you say sensors, be and it's true, because we talk about the Internet of Things, and we talk about industrial revolution, industry 4.0, and next generation automobiles, and cloud, I mean, it's all part and parcel connected. They have to sense, right? Correct, but I mean, you know, sensors, first of all, it's not something new. It's been there for a century. I, I found out that the first sensor has been created in 1883. It was a thermostat. The oh. first device that transformed a signal, a measurement into, into a signal. Um, and for us, it's all about the future now. It's about IoT, Internet of Things. It, it's, it's very interesting because there's so many players that want to develop their IoT infrastructure. For us, IoT starts always with data collection. If you don't collect data, you don't have Internet of Things. And once you collect your data, it's about safely and in a secure way with confidentiality, sharing data with your customer, and the customer can then make educated decision about safety, profitability, whatever they want. Um, from a whole perspective, what's interesting is that we're able to collect data from various means. Um, it start with optical engine, for instance. A lot of you noticed, but when you came here, you had to scan a barcode to just enter the show. And it's very likely that the engine used to scan the barcode is our Newell engine. You got gas sensors. I guess we need to measure O2, CO2, and H. A lot of gas sensors. And finally, what we're talking about here from a Bornman perspective are Bornman sensors, and also we have switches. Very nice. Well, so when it comes to sensing, you know, you have to worry about the fact that there's no precision without feedback. And it, it's not enough to just simply have a sensor in place. It's got to be small enough to fit the application. It's got to be accurate and it's got to be low power, right? Correct. So, you know, quality of the data is important, but it has to also to fit the application. In IoT, people will want a low power mode and very small devices. So we got a actually very interesting product that customers are using. And actually, it's so small that I don't want to lose it. Okay. So let's uh, see it. Oh, I have to make sure I don't lose it. So if you look at this product here, and I know it's very small, it's called a micro pressure. It's five millimeters by five millimeters. Measure output is digital, is a piezo-resistive silicon pressure sensor. Digital, comp uh, compensated, and calibrated. So our customers, why do they want to use this? You wonder, because it's limited in pressure also. But if you think about customers in healthcare, and they want to build wearable devices, they want something extremely small and extremely precise. So as you can see, size matters. You want it as small as possible, yet very accurate. We also have customers that would like to use it in white good, liquid level measurements, because they want to be able to be now very granular about liquid level, and it's not anymore a yes, no, it's they want to know exactly the pressure because they want to add value to the customer in terms of data will tell them exactly what the machine needs to do. Now, what application spaces are you really seeing with Honeywell that are very, very promising for you and for your technologies? So we do see a lot of opportunities in all verticals, and there's no limitation to it. It can be aerospace, transportation, and medical. I'll share the examples on wide good and medical with a micropressure, but as a, an industry, the big players are driving what we call the 4.0 already. So you will have Airbus or Boeing, they will want connected plane. So Honeywell already from the top designed a strategy around connected freight, connected warehouse, connected worker. If you think about a connected worker and gas sensors, you don't want somebody to walk into a mine and don't know if she's in danger. So you want a sensor to be able to tell the user, get out of here, and a supervisor to be aware of the risk before the user knows himself. So there's no limitation to where IoT would apply from a vertical perspective to our view. Very nice. Well, and the world is connected nowadays. A lot of people talk about smart grid, but the smart grid's connected to Industry 4.0, and Industry 4.0 is connected to the smart home, and all the core technologies are all shared. Correct. So, what's important in our stage is that, as part of the solution we're developing, it's not only about sensors, it's about software. I mean, an article has been posted by iBase-T a few years ago, showing that 42% of companies dealing with IoT today are software houses. There are small startups, very innovative, very creative, that are interested in developing the software part between the data collection and the data mining. 
because if you can't mine the data and explain and show the data in a way that people can make decisions and fast, data is useless. So we, for instance, as Honeywell, this partnership with companies like Surrey Sensors Limited in the UK, and Surrey Sensors is a very interesting business because it's a, a relationship, a partnership, I would say, between a private venture and a Surrey University. And what they do, they use their cutting edge technology and knowledge to design and manufacture. They also manufacture measurement devices in aerospace and Formula One, but they're very, very creative. And they use actually in their product, our uh, Honeywell True Stability Sensor, it's a digital output because they really want the best technology to fit their high requirements. But you can see it's interesting to see what can creativity do when you combine with the right mind and the right product. Very creative, very interesting. Very nice. And, and speaking of that, what, what do you see in the future? Are there any application spaces or any technologies that are almost there or that you think are uh, promising? Um, industry already started, but it's not anymore about being small. It's about being connected. So you will find windmills being connected. Some actually using the Honeywell Cloud to communicate data between the windmills and the database, and they use a software called Mobilizer from Honeywell. But what we'll see now moving forward is really the uh, wearable, home devices, some, let's say, mass production, and this is where price and size get, really matters. It's why we have micro pressure, we're going to have micro force, everything is going to have to be small, very precise, and very focused on some applications. So I would say the shift will be from industrial to users, home care, these kind of applications. Very cool. Now, before I let you go, do you have any last words for our audience? I would just say that if we look at what we do with Arrow and Honeywell, um, Arrow is a very good platform from us to push our IoT solution because through their Indiegogo platform or their own business from our perspective, they give us the leverage to go beyond the technology we offer ourselves and give a more broader portfolio to our customers. So, very excited about it. I'm really glad you took the time to talk to us at this really busy show. Thank you so much. Thank you much. very much. Take care, Alec.